My name is Upwong Ekpe. I'm the managing director of Aqua Tourism Development Company Limited, a private tourism firm that has buyers for tourism product development. We are based in Aqua Ibom State, New York. Okay, so as many of the stakeholders in the Nigerian tourism, what trends we know? So what trends have you observed the past five to ten years? Well, I would say that it's not more of a trend, but more of challenges. Challenges where destinations are not promoted. Even when they are promoted, there are still some negative uh, vibes from some set of people about our country, Nigeria. And for me, it will not, it's not going to sell Nigeria. What will sell Nigeria is the, the rebranding of our tourism space. It's letting the world know the potentials that are in tourism. Letting the world know that it is in Nigeria that we have the longest stretch of sandy beach or in the coast of Africa. That's the Ipano Beach. That's part of 129 kilometers, taking about five local government. So for me, there was huge potential to judgment that we can unlock. But we need to be very intentional. We need to have a government that is pro-tourism. We need to have a government that understands that tourism is the highest employer of labor, apart from the civil service. Fine. Right. For you to have observed this trend, because you've been in the tourism business for a long while. So how did you get into this tourism and what made you, you know, stay this long despite all these challenges we have? I'm 48 years of age and I've spent 24 years doing the business of tourism. In the year 2000, I was called upon by the uh, former governor of Crosby State, Mr. Donald Duke, to be a part of what he was doing. I started as the first PRO of a tourism initiative in Cross River called the Cross River Tourism Development Initiative that metamorphosed into what is called FTAN today. I was also the youngest person to serve as a member of the Presidential Council on Tourism when Chief Rumishuko Obasanjo was the president of Nigeria. What has kept me in the business of tourism today is the passion. It's the fact that I'm using tourism to preach the hospitality nature of our people. It's the fact that I'm using tourism to preach history. It's the fact that I'm using tourism to let the entire world know that, uh, uh, that Nigeria is the best place to live. It's the fact that I'm using that passion that I have in me to let people know that with tourism, we can take young men and women out of the street and get them gainfully employed. That is what has kept me in the last 24 years. Okay. So another person I would like to build on that, you know, Akwai Bomb is very beautiful. I've not been there myself. So how do we you know, drive this into those intra-state tourism? Now, uh, Localize your tools. I have a tour brand I call Dise Aquaibo, meaning come and see Aquaibo. When you get to Aquaibo, then every tourist who comes to our state is given a local name. Before you leave, you must answer our local name before you leave. You know, that's the way of making you to internalize with what we have. So I want to see states brand their tourism product in their local name. For instance, there was a time we used to hear a I, I, I mean, if you make that to be a tour product, you can imagine the number of persons that would buy into that tour package. I'd like to say here that in 2002, I promoted a tour package called Ntenkama, meaning hospitality in Cross River State, taking people to Ubudu Kati Ranch. When you localize your tour, it makes it more appealing. People want to read what it means. If you if you go to South Africa, you would you would be or, or Ghana, you hear Aquaba, you will hear those kind of names. You will hear Saubona. Those are the kind of local names that you give to your tours that will make a lot of sense. So for us to get it right, we must internalize our tour package and add local content to it for it to have value. So, last question. During your speech, you also made mention of the okay, what do you have for us, uh, Ran? I mean, where you approach me, government officials, and ask for <clears throat> permission of all, whatever. They make some requests from you. I, that shows corruption. So how can we address this government inefficiency? I want to call that um, entitlement mentality. And it's not right. It's a negative uh, vibe that is killing us as, as, as the people. Even just this morning, you told that I still, before I left, the guy was telling me, okay, what do you have for me? And I said, what I have for you is the salary that you have been paid. We must begin to conscientize our people and let them know that that entitlement mentality is wrong. We must see others as ourselves. What is good for the goods is good for the Ghana. So we must be able to tell our stories the right way, change that narrative and let our people know that it is there's dignity in labor. When you do something right, you don't need somebody to tell you to do appreciation. Appreciation stems from the innate ability of one to see that this person has done well.
So going forward, what will we be doing different? For us to do something different, we must change the political will. The government must be interested in the business of tourism. The government must not pay lip service to tourism. And we as a people, as citizens of Nigeria, we must sell Nigeria to Nigerians, sell Nigeria to Africans, sell Nigeria globally. And I tell you what, people will come to Nigeria. And I want to say here, it is wrong for us to keep using these words, Nigeria has happened to us. Nigeria is a name of a country. Whatever we are, pay, are passing through is a phase. It will get better. All yeah, right. Thank you very much, sir. Just tell us your name. Out. Once again, my name is Ubong Ekwe. I'm a tourism product developer and CEO of Aqua Tourism Development Company Limited. Thanks for your time, sir. Congratulations for staying in Lagos. I will do my best.